Drift, wow. I'm just coming out of a long drift playing session to write this review and I'm pretty stunned by the speed, by the art design, by this game that can only work in VR. Imagine drift as a roller coaster ride, just that it's you who determines where the roller coaster is going, there are no rails. Imagine being in a matrix training program, but rather than kung fu, you are learning to become the perfect bullet that never misses its target. That's drift. And you're indeed within a training program. It might even be in the matrix, who knows? We only know that the program was constructed by a Dr. Kwong, a mysterious person who loves octopuses and wants to help you to become perfect. We don't get to meet Dr. Kwong though, we only hear the voice of Walter who leads us through the training program. Think of Portal's GLaDOS only in male and less evil. It's charming and well done. You start each level with the push of a button and the craziness starts. You are a bullet that gets shot into the virtual worlds of drift. At absolute breakneck speed. You can control the path the bullet takes simply with your gaze. Look to the right for example and that's where you're going. You are in absolute control flying through the levels. Your objective is to reach the goal of each level, a blue and shining object that needs to be found first though. If you hit something else on your way to your goal, you lose and have to start from the very beginning again. And there are lots of things in your way in drift. Thankfully, you can activate a slow motion mode by pushing your motion controller's touchpad. Without this function, you could probably not even finish a single level in drift. These slow motion phases, however, are limited to around 5 seconds. And once you have used up all your slow motion quarter, there is no stopping the bullet until you reach your goal or until you collect a green diamond. Those diamonds help you to refill your slow motion quarter and therefore are substantial to finishing levels. As you might have guessed, Drift is not for the faint of heart. This game is hard, really really hard. You will need to remember how to fly and try a level over and over again before you master it. At least your flight through Drift is leaving a trail behind. So the next time you have to try the level again, you see how you flew in the last try. This is an enormous help on your way to the exit. Sometimes it is really hard to find the exit though and the game can even become very frustrating when you're flying around in circles and have no idea where to go. Hint, there's a window somewhere on the right building in the superhero level. You're welcome. Drift's art style is very comparable to that of Res with its low poly count and its quite psychedelic nature. Have you ever wished not to be bound to the rails in res? Well, now's your chance and you are free to float around and drift. Each level has its own atmosphere, no level is like the other. At one moment you are flying through interconnected rooms, next you are within a pinball just to fly through a superhero movie next. It's nice and only hindered by the speed that does not allow you to take in all of the artwork that you're flying through. Good thing that every Saturday you can use as much slow motion as you want so you could revisit the levels and have a closer look at what you had been flying by. Also, I'm quite sure a lot of you will look forward to Saturdays just to beat this game. Drift is made for VR and it can only work in VR. You're deeply involved in this world since you're flying through it from the first person perspective. Who had thought that we would ever become flying bullets? The game is so intense that you will have a hard time playing the game seated. This would only work in a good swivel chair, if at all. When I was playing the game I was standing up and often went down bent my knees in order to avoid obstacles. It's good that Daydream VR does not have any cables attached to the headset because you would run into serious problems with this game. Drift is fast and it's first person. It definitely pushes the limits of comfort. I have played hours in VR until this point in time now, but after this first half hour of drift, I had to make a break to relax and calm down again from this crazy ride in VR. However, after a while I wanted to get back into VR to finally beat that level. And after a while, you do get used to speeding in VR. Drift is not for everybody. Those who don't enjoy roller coasters in real life or get sick easily by the VR simulations don't need to bother. 
Drift is not for you. Also players that easily get impatient and just want to advance through games as soon as possible should look elsewhere. Drift is for those kind of gamers who love a real good challenge. Those who get their kicks out of completing incredibly hard levels, they can only be beaten by remembering each obstacle and trying a level over and over until they have fully mastered it. Those people will love Drift. Those people will worship Drift. Drift is a gift for the real hardcore gamer and those who would like to see if they have what it takes to become one. For the full written review of Drift and much more, go to daydreamdistrict.com and if you enjoyed this video, click on like and subscribe to never miss a Daydream District video in the future.